Hello, this is Wampire, um, here to talk about knife defense. So this is what I call the fiend method, all right? This might be the first time that, that I say the name. This is the fiend method. So what's important to understand about the fiend method is it goes together with the diamond defense. And by goes together, um, they're, kind of, they're companions, but... It doesn't mean you link them together. I don't. I don't want you to link them together. They're they're for different circumstances. Okay, the diamond defense is when you're in long range and the opponent is attacking you. All right. The most important thing there is that the opponent is attacking you already. The action has started. All right. So in that case, you need absolutely need distance. <laughs> you totally need it. The more distance, the better. I can't stress that enough. If you want to attack them back, you will decrease your distance at that point. Okay. If you try to attack them back, you try to counter, you try to, you know, defang the snake or whatever the heck it is that you want to do, you will decrease the distance between you and the opponent. And that is the opposite of what we want. We want as much distance as possible. So that's why I recommend that you don't even attack. Don't attack, all right? It's all about the distance. The distance keeps you safe. You want survival. So that is the diamond defense. This right here is when the opponent is not attacking you. As you can see, he's just standing there. He's threatening me. I've already surrendered. So this this is not a fight. We're not in action at this moment. Okay? At this moment, this is we're negotiating. All right? So because the opponent is not moving, relatively so, they might be inching forward towards me, right? And I might be inching towards them whether they know it or not, okay? Or I might be allowing it because the closer the better. It's the opposite from the diamond defense. The diamond defense, the further the better. In this one, the closer the better, okay? And at this point right here, I am surrendering and I am doing everything I can to make it seem like I do not want to fight back, all right? So that and because we're... In close, close range, the closer the better, I am able to do this. Okay, I'm able to grab their hand because he is not really moving. We're close enough and he doesn't think that I'm going to do this. So those three factors increase my chances of doing the wrist grab. Okay, so if the guy's already stabbing at me, I know some self-defense instructors teach the wrist grab. N no, no, the, you, you, you won't be able to wrist grab. And if you do, you're still going to get cut up because it doesn't take much for them to wiggle and worm their, their arm around and, it'll, and the blade will start cutting you. So that's why I don't, I don't uh, teach that, okay? If the arm is is moving and they're attacking you, we go to the diamond defense. No, I don't try to do it here, I, what you're seeing here. No, I don't try to do that. I go to the diamond defense. So I hope that's very, very clear and simple to understand. Even here, from here to here, I think you can see there's a risk, right? There is a risk. Now imagine if the guy's already attacking me, the risk is even greater and it, and it is way greater. And I'm not going to be able to do this. It's going to be so much harder for me to, to grab that hand and, you know, do whatever. So I'm telling you, this is, I'm grabbing the hand only when they're not moving. And then I am able to get close like this. All right. So from this, the moment I'm grab here, I immediately go to this. Why? Because if I grab and stay here, it's they're going to try to take their arm out. They're, they're going to try to yank it out, and we're going to end up in a tug of war. And obviously, he's bigger, stronger, and meaner than me. I'm going to lose that war. So I need to secure it. 
Boom. Now, I know there are self-defense instructors that teach. Once you grab it, you should headbutt the guy. You should knee him in the balls. You should attack his eyes, attack his throat. I'm saying to you guys, no. No way. Why? Because he could do the same to me. Look, look at him. He, he is totally capable to do the same to me. And I don't, I don't want to play that game. Who could hurt, hurt who more? I'd say he wins. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to secure it. And as I secure it, my head should be pointed downwards so that he cannot headbutt me in the face. My right arm should be checking his left arm so that he can't punch me. And I should be standing in a way that it makes it harder for him to knee me in the balls. So I'm not face to squared up with him, you know, where it's easy for him to just knee me in the, in the balls. Okay. So this is the position. Um, we could improve this position a little bit more, but uh, I should be thinking about those things. But even, you know, that, that comes with practice. But even then, boom, I'm going to go to here as fast as I can. So to go from grab, wrap, wrench, that's all one, two, three. It should be that fast. So grab, wrap, and then wrench. I immediately start wrenching right here. When I start wrenching, it doesn't matter whether he feels the pain or not. It's all about me manipulating his skeleton. So you can see that his skeleton is being attacked or controlled by me. By, by doing the wrenching right on his wrist and elbow. I'm putting a lot of pressure on those two so it turns his body and it makes it very difficult for him to attack me. As you can see, at that angle, it's hard for him to do so. He doesn't want to turn into me because he can't, you know, physically. It's, it's, I'm, I'm turning his wrist in the wrong direction. So from here, I'm going to go to this. And that is the finger lock, which I am now attacking one of the smallest joints in his entire body, which is the finger, the pinky finger, right? If preferably, any finger will do, but if you can, the pinky finger, right? Because it's the smallest of the fingers. But anyway, I start attacking the finger, and, and this is a pain compliance hold like police officers use, so hopefully this could diffuse the situation or... Um, I could use it to disarm, you know, take his knife away from him or make him drop the knife, right? It just depends on, on what happens. But uh, so this, this is where I want to get to, okay? So back again, I cannot reiterate enough. I cannot emphasize <laughs> enough that, you know, when, when, when the guy starts attacking me with the knife, I'm doing the diamond defense. I'm not going to do this. I'm not even thinking about this. I do the diamond defense and I run away. Okay. Now, if I've surrendered, if I've surrendered, and this is the situation here, I said, hey, man, dude, you win. I give up. You got it. What do you want? My wallet? You know, whatever. And we're negotiating right here. Okay. So at this point, he stopped. He stopped. Then I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do that. All right. So to go to go from using the diamond defense, the force to force block into jamming his arm. If I'm able to jam his arm, that means his arm is is not moving. And then I could go into this, but I want you guys to know that to go from the guy attacking me with the knife to this is even harder than this to this. Okay, does, does, does that make sense? So this to this is doable. But if the guy's already slashing at me, to go from that to this is very, 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 very difficult. Very difficult. Okay, very difficult. So um, I, I want people to, to understand that. Okay, so anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.